It is my privilege to talk to you about this year's group of seniors. Each one of them have already walked across the platform, received their diploma, and turned their tassel. But I can remember vividly each and every one of them coming into the youth group, whether they were coming in midstream or promoting in as the new seventh grader. You know, life is full of memories, some good, some bad. And I have a memory for each and every one of these teenagers, whether uh, it's Patrick Ford coming in, playing the saxophone, always looking smooth, acting smooth, or Allie Nepshield, who I don't personally think she has a single mean bone in her body, or Kenny Bacon, who hasn't changed one bit from seventh grade to 12th grade. Not his looks, not his height, not his voice, nothing. But I thought it'd be better to hear it from them. So sit back and enjoy as we ask them some questions and reflecting on some of their teenage experience. I never really had a bad nickname, but some people have called me various fish, like salmon. <laughs> <laughs> I thought they actually called you various fish. My worst nickname was given to me by Pastor Delaney, and that, <laughs> and that is Shorty. Uh, Actually, I've only had ever had two nicknames, Hannah Banana and Hannah Evil Eyes, and they're both terrible. So, Milky Pin, Milky, Milky Pin. pin. <laughs> What's that? Mean? Is there a story behind? I don't know. There better be. <laughs> um, my worst nickname would be Anna Fail. My dad used to call me Fast Eddie Felson. I don't know why. All right, my nickname was also given to me by Johnny, and he's the only one who calls me, <laughs> and it's Bernard. Worst nickname ever. <laughs> I win. <laughs> I didn't really have any bad nicknames, but I have had a lot here. Taytar, um, Sass, Sassy, Taytar Sassy, Sass Master, uh, Tater Sauce from Pastor Skelly. My worst nickname that I've ever been called was Kiki. At a basketball game, they started calling me Lenny, <laughs> and then somehow it morphed into Jenny, which is even worse. <laughs> <laughs> My worst nickname throughout the years probably boils down to patty cake. <laughs> My biggest influence would probably be Mrs. Nicole Stokes. Um, she has just always been there for me with anything that I need to talk about or she'll just hang out with me just to get to know me more. So I really miss her and I can't wait for her to come home. My biggest influence to my parents would probably be Mrs. Delaney because she's been there for a lot of different things that I've gone through and I know I can talk to her. But... Influence would probably be Pastor D because pretty much every lesson he ever talked about was exactly what I was dealing with, either what I was about to or what I've already dealt with. My biggest influence besides my parents would be my brother Joshua. We're uh, very close and uh, he's grown a lot in the Lord and I can see that in him. I plan on going to Penn State New Kensington this fall to study elementary education. I am eventually transferring to Geneva, undecided major. <laughs> I'll be going to Cinema Makeup School in Hollywood, California. Uh, my future plans is to attend Point Park University for cinema production. Uh, I'm planning to go to West Coast for secondary education. I'm going to, I'm praying about whether or not to go to Bible College. If so, I'll be going to Pensacola. My future plans are to attend West Coast Baptist College this fall. I'm not exactly sure what I'm majoring in yet, but I'm excited to go out to California. Um, I'm going to go to West Coast Baptist College and study secondary education. My future plans are to attend CCAC for two years for an undecided major and then transfer to finish. I will be attending Geneva College to study pre-medicine. I'm going to Pensacola Christian College to study performance arts. Future plan is to go to study Stevens, study carpentry. Um, I think my favorite activity, or at least one of my favorites, would be um, game night here at the church a couple years ago. We did a huge Nerf war, and it was it was pretty legit. And it was a lot of fun. Uh, my favorite memory is suiting up for games. Yeah. <laughs> the paintball event we had over at uh, oh, Scotty and everybody else. That was really fun. 
Okay, my favorite activity was probably the ninth grade scavenger hunt when we SRAM wrapped a bus in Eddie and threw him in the garbage can. <laughs> <laughs> um, what I would, what I will miss most about the youth group would just be um, spending time with all my friends and getting to know them better and um, just learning more about other people and being involved with my friends. Yep, yep. I love Jesus because no matter how many times I mess up, he'll always forgive me and he'll always love me through it. Um, I love Jesus because he's done everything for me and he's given me second chances. I love Jesus because of what he did for me and for all of us on the cross. I love Jesus because he first loved me. I love Jesus because he's more than just my Heavenly Father, he's also my friend. I love Jesus for, because of everything he's done for me and that he saved me. Um, my biggest advice um, is to kind of do what I didn't do, like the past, like, I think 11th and 12th grade, I wasn't nearly as involved as I probably should have been and, like, as involved as I wanted to be, so. I would advise you guys just to get involved as much as possible, take every opportunity that you have, and just be all in. Don't miss out on anything. Just be there, you know, every Sunday morning. Sunday night, Wednesday night, be at all the youth activities, and just have fun while you're in the youth group. <laughs> My advice to the underclassmen would be to stop waiting to live for God. You don't need you don't need to be a certain age or in a certain grade to live for the Lord. You can do it now. So I waited until the end of my junior year to really be serious about my faith. And so my advice to you is not to wait that long. Twelfth grade me would say to seventh grade me to be more outgoing because I was very shy and I basically didn't talk. Last words would probably be pay attention to like what's taught because um, one, one thing that I did, I didn't necessarily like pay attention to it, I didn't put any importance to it and now that I look back now, I wish that I did uh, like take in all the advice that I got through like teen activities and services and stuff like that. Twelfth grade me would say seventh grade me to not be annoying. <laughs> Um, get involved and be outgoing. My last words would probably be diligence is key. Work as hard as you can, the best you can, anything you do. Um, my last words to youth group would be to not forget what youth group is about. It's, um, you know, we have a lot of fun and everything, but it's to grow in the Lord together. I would say to everybody, um, try to branch out from your normal group and try to make new friends because you never know who will be your closest friends. Um, I've really tried to do that this year and I've made a lot of new friends and I'm really happy that I try to branch out. My last words are actually a quote and that is let go and let God. The words would be don't just be one of those people in the crowd. Uh, be unique, you know, be yourself, step out of your box. Don't show up every day just to, just to show up and be a presence. Uh, make the most out of every opportunity uh, take advantage of every opportunity God has given you, and uh, just be real. It's a quote, and now whatever way our stories end, I know you guys have rewritten mine by being my friends. My last words would be, it's also a quote, let your faith be bigger than your fear. You don't need to be a certain age or in a certain grade to live for the Lord. You can do it now. Thank you seniors for a great few years. Uh, each one of you will be greatly missed and will never be replaced. You guys did a great job at leading in a Christ-like manner. We're so excited to see what the next chapter in life holds for each and every one of you, and we'll be here to cheer you on. As you think back through your teenage years, I'm reminded of a famous quote by a famous man, uh, Dr. Seuss. He said, don't cry because it's over, smile because it happened. Love you guys.